In that case, allow me to formally welcome the Fatui to our cause. We now face a common enemy. It's time to put our differences behind us and look to the future. As for Auroron, his actions may have been out of line, but I don't intend to punish him right now. I'd rather give him a chance to prove himself. A magnanimous decision. We're back! Whoa, seeing the two of you chatting like this, Paimon almost feels like she's dreaming. This may be an unexpected outcome, but a favorable one nonetheless. Now that we're all here, I have some questions of my own. Tell me, how did you discover the source mechanism? We weren't getting any closer to obtaining the Gnosis, so I had my men scour Natland for a different option. Auroron helped as well. We tracked down three scholars, Aberawa, Bosomtwe, and Kushtal, and combined the results of their research to locate this ancient device. <sighs> I've never heard those names before. Seems like my own investigation failed to locate some critical personnel. I'm just not sure how I missed them. Strange. Perhaps they simply live in seclusion. In any case, their results speak for themselves. That's true. Now we have another option at our disposal. Compared to using the Gnosis, our current plan will buy us some time. And if all else fails, we still have this plan as a last resort. Even though executing it will come at a heavy cost. But that means making everyone forget their past! We should definitely try to avoid it if we can! Oh, uh, actually, speaking of the Gnosis, how did you know what it could do? That story begins with the Cataclysm 500 years ago. I failed to save Conria from the Rampage of the Abyss. When the situation became unsalvageable, I fled to Natlan with the remainder of my platoon. Only to find that Natlan had fallen victim to the same tragedy. I defended this land for quite some time and, in the process, met the chief of the Masters of the Nightwind, Aizu. I'm sure many people viewed Conria as the cause of the tragedy, but Aizu was kind to me all the same, and even helped me in my time of need. From that moment, I made it my mission to aid Natlan. In battle, a warrior fights to win. Even though my homeland was lost, I was already committed to this fight. Together, Aizu and I fought many battles and overcame countless hardships. However, he was unable to escape his fate, and in his final moments, told me the secret of the Gnosis. So it was him. He recommended using the Gnosis on several occasions even before the tragedy, but I turned him down each time. You knew him, and you fought for Natlan all those years ago. Why don't I recognize you? <sighs> it must be the mask. <clears throat> Even without the mask, my past appearance is long gone. Even with the curse of immortality, the flesh still rots. Wait, do you know someone named Dainsliff? That problem doesn't seem quite so... extreme for him. You've met him already? Yeah, a bunch of times. Sounds like you know him too. During the Age of Conria, all I knew was his name. The last time I saw him in person, he was traveling with the princess. He carries a degree of pain and hatred that far surpasses my own. Yes, you're the brother of the princess. Given the role I held in Conria, I would prefer not to harm you. Although, this is likely a self-imposed burden. If the princess saw me now, I doubt she would even recognize me. As for your question, I don't know how Dane managed to slow the deterioration of his body. My appearance is much changed, and that's not the only thing. Even my physical strength is a shadow of what it once was. I would have never known. 
During our battle, it felt like I was fighting against the pinnacle of human strength. <laughs> and I still lost. I deserve no praise for that outcome. Still, it's a shame we never faced off 500 years ago. You could have seen what I was truly capable of. I agree. Had we fought then, I'd also have been more motivated to go all out. So, all that commotion back at the stadium, and you're saying neither of you were using your full strength? <laughs> I'd say we're evenly matched. If we face off again, victory will come down to who wants it more. I imagine you held back since there were spectators around that could have gotten hurt. But... Capitalizing on that situation would have only led to a hollow victory. It would have been no different than taking hostages. My goal was the Gnosis, and I failed to obtain it. That means I lost, plain and simple. Her Majesty the Tsaritsa allows every Harbinger the freedom to pursue the meaning of their existence. When the time comes, that freedom can take precedence over her orders. That's why our methods can be so radically different, despite sharing the same goal and the same sovereign. I needed the Gnosis because I came here to save Natlan. That was my primary motive. Once Natlan is saved, if the Gnosis still remained in my possession, I could bring it back to Snezhnaya. My decision regarding the Gnosis will not change, so let's focus on the Abyss for now. when all six heroes are together? We will unleash a great power that can be used to thwart the Abyss. But only once. It's a power that Shibalanke gained from Renova. Renova is a god whose existence predates any Archon. You can think of her like an emissary of the Heavenly Principles. She controls the power of death. Wait. Is that why you have the Ode of Resurrection? Yes. Renova also orchestrated Natlan's rules. As for the Divine Throne... Like I said before, when a human ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. The size of the flame depends on the person's potential. The same principle applies to the Ruler of Death's power. With one notable distinction. The amount of power inherited will not change depending on your ability to tolerate it. In other words, it's a kind of power that not everyone can withstand. But if you survive the trial, you will gain unprecedented strength, and the ability to harness powers more formidable than any Archon. That still sounds really risky. We cannot walk this path without accepting risk. Mualani charged into the Night Kingdom despite the Abyssal contamination. Auroron fought back from the brink of death. In the face of their bravery, I must respond in kind. That is my duty. Spoken like a true leader. <sighs> All right, that's enough for one day. You should head back and get some rest. I'm sure you're exhausted. The Abyss will likely sense the change in Auroron. It's possible the frequency of the attacks will increase. There are many challenges to come, so we need to be prepared. When you put it that way... My mom feels even more exhausted. Oh, all right, let's head back. Now that we're working together, we'll need to coordinate our efforts. I'll leave a portion of my forces for you to command. That will definitely help relieve some pressure. You're sure they won't object? It's an order. I will make that clear. Excellent. I appreciate your trust. <laughs>